They're a moderate organization that, by the way, has spoken out against Islamic or so-called Islamic Wait, terrorism. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you saying CARE is a moderate yeah, organization? Yes, so and they've spoken out against okay, Islamic well, that, terrorism. Okay, well, that's just, that's factually not well, true, is it? <laughs> Hi, I'm John Guandolo, president and founder of UTT. UTT was created to be a national security organization to go after the global Islamic movement in all forms here in the United States and to assist others who are doing it elsewhere. John Guandolo, he created and implemented the FBI's first counterterrorism training education program. Former FBI agent was assigned to the counterterrorism division in D.C. He's the founder of a website, understandingthethreat.com, co-author of Sharia, the Threat to America, author of a soon-to-be-released book, Raising a Jihadi Generation, Handbook for Law Enforcement, Military, and Intelligence Professionals. And uh, it's an honor to have you on the program, John. I just, I want to know, I really have one question, and, and I'll let you expand on it as much as you want. Am I right that historians will view this time in, um, in world history as the rise of the radical Islamists? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. And, and yes, I think um, what, what we are witnessing clearly is the uh, what our enemy calls the global Islamic movement. And it is on the rise in nearly every nation on the face of the earth. And I think the average uh, reasonable and rational person can look at what we're what we're seeing and take it for what it is. And that, that, that gets to the root of, I think, the issue of our leadership in this country is we have leaders who are dismissing a massive threat both to the West, but specifically in the United States, where we have an enemy that clearly states who they are and what their objectives are, and uh, they are significantly moving forward in what they seek to do, which is to uh, overthrow governments and impose Islamic governments under Islamic law, Sharia. And that would be CARE, which is Hamas well, well, in, in Ohio. So. They're a moderate organization that, by the way, has spoken out against Islamic or so-called Islamic Wait, terrorism. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you saying CARE is a moderate yes, organization? Yes, and they've spoken out against okay, Islamic well, that, terrorism. Okay, well, that's just, that's factually not well, true, Well, we, we can disagree court, about right? that. I've been, no, I didn't hear them. They've spoken no, out against... No, we actually can't. No, we, we can't, can't disagree about that? Okay. No, we can't because uh, it's on, on record uh -huh. at the federal court and the appellate court and the FBI and right. DOJ that CARE was founded as a part of the right, Palestinian well, Committee of the Muslim Brotherhood. We're going to have to disagree. John, what do you expect for James Comey going forward? Is Trump going to fire him? Well, I certainly would hope so. Uh, he's certainly lost all credibility inside the FBI. Um, and there is a, uh, a lot of frustration because anybody else uh, would have been prosecuted under the circumstances. And I just want to say for your audience to be very clear, this isn't about just emails and it's not just about a server. Uh, Mrs. Clinton went into foreign countries with unsecured devices, plural, and received top secret special access information, uh, secret information and confidential information, which there is a 100% chance that that information is now in the hands of foreign governments because of that. Now, she either did it wittingly, which is called espionage, which is why the uh, original investigation was a counterintelligence espionage investigation, or she did it unwittingly um, and was negligent, in which case other laws were violated and she should be indicted. In either case, she mishandled classified information, which is a violation of federal law at a bare minimum. I'm a national security consultant with a company called Understanding the Threat, or UTT. UTT is the only organization in America which trains law enforcement, intelligence professionals, military and leaders on the threat from the global Islamic movement, the doctrine of jihadi groups, and how to identify, investigate, and dismantle them. At UTT, we hold the firm belief that in order to defeat the global Islamic movement, we must understand the enemy. It actually goes back um, uh, more than a year before uh, the revolution that we saw in Egypt. Uh, there were clear markers that the Muslim Brotherhood laid down that this was coming. Um, and a big point that uh, I, I would love for your viewers to understand is that what, if we understand the Muslim Brotherhood and their doctrine and uh, how they communicate their message, uh, this was a knowable and predictable event. What is the most important threat for us to understand? 
Well, I think uh, when we talk about whether it's, we're talking about back in Iraq or Afghanistan or we're talking about right here domestically, we still, since 9-11, have not decided to actually understand the threat. And I think even if um, Mr. Trump wins, there are a lot of people, I think, that will then become complacent and say, well, there we go, now we can fix everything. But the problem is that this threat, the Islamic threat specifically, but also, as we talked about last time, it is completely merged now with the hard left, uh, including the Democrat Party, the Marxist movement, which you could say are the exact same thing here in the United States. They are very ingrained in the society. And it's the party, the Democrat Party and the Marxist movement that is actually doing the work for the jihadis in this nation, which we've talked about, how that propels the Islamic movement in the country. So it's going to literally take, at the state and local level, law enforcement, preferably sheriffs, and citizens to actually deal with this threat. According to one expert, the group is also making inroads closer to home. Their goal is primarily deception, manipulation, and intelligence gathering. And Former FBI Special Agent John Guandalo says Brotherhood operatives have infiltrated the halls of power in Washington, D.C. What we're seeing inside uh, not just the White House, but inside the government entities, uh, the national security entities, State Department, a strong push by the Muslim Brotherhood to get their people in. Today, we face a dangerous and imminent threat from the global Islamic movement, which is waging total war against the West, a kinetic, economic, social, psychological, spiritual, and informational war. Our leadership neither knows nor understands this enemy, yet continues to commit American blood and treasure to the war effort that is unfocused and unending. Joining me now is uh, Chris Galvitz, the Vice President of Understanding the Threat. Uh, I've talked to him before and I, 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 I find it fascinating. But I think it's very important to understand <clears throat> excuse me, the message that he carries, which is multifaceted. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Good morning, Kurt. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining me. Listen, I want to get right to it. In Ludwigshafen, Germany, a, a quote-unquote strongly radicalized 12-year-old boy of Iraqi heritage planted a bomb at a Christmas market at the end of November. That is our enemy. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that we talk about when we train law enforcement is look to Europe. As Europe goes, so will the U.S. The strategies by the jihadi groups that are used in Europe are also used here. And, you know, to your point that you had mentioned about uh, children being used as suicide bombers or just in the jihad in general, look, from a jihadi perspective, the best gift that you can give anyone is guaranteed paradise. And the only way in Islam to guarantee paradise is to die in jihad. So they're actually, yeah. they see it as giving the, these children a gift. And look, uh, you no other way to uh, to make people proud than, than going for jihad. That is the highest form of worship uh, under this system. And it's a totalitarian system. And I think the reason that so many people have a hard time grasping this concept is because the last few generations have grown up in a world that didn't have a caliphate. Uh, the, the Ottoman Caliphate was disbanded in 1924, and so you've had generations of people growing up that this seems like ancient history. But we've got 1,400 years of Islamic conquest into the Western world. There was just a pause from the 20s until uh, probably about the time that they started getting the big uh, oil money in the 70s of jihad. And now we have a caliphate again. So this is nothing new from a historical perspective. It's just new to a lot of people because it's just now starting to hit us. This has been going on for centuries, though. Now, John, this is the motto or the creed of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is not a moderate group, judging by their motto. Take us back a bit to how this group was founded, where they were founded, and why they were founded. The Muslim Brotherhood was founded in... Uh 1928 in Cairo, Egypt, outside of Cairo, Egypt, by a man named Hassan al-Banna, the son of a prominent imam. And uh, Hassan al-Banna founded the Brotherhood, which was originally called the Society of Muslim Brothers. And the Brotherhood uh, was created to reestablish the global Islamic State, which is called the Caliphate, and uh, implement 
Islamic law. They intend to get our senior leadership, our religious organizations, our media, our educational system, our law enforcement and intelligence uh, leadership and the political leadership and the military leadership to do the work for them. And this is key to understanding how they intend to defeat us. John Guandolo is a retired Marine and a former FBI special agent in the Counterterrorism Division. They use political influence operations, they use propaganda, they use uh, the subversion, cultural subversion in our educational systems beginning in the elementary and junior high schools, uh, but certainly in the universities, in the media, in the political sphere, in the the defenders of the society, law enforcement, military intelligence in those communities. I think they're not only winning the information war, they're gonna win the entire war if we don't get off the mark and start actually engaging them where they're engaging us. You can liken what they're doing to an insurgency and therefore what, what we have to do can be likened to a counterinsurgency and in a counterinsurgency, the focus has to be the local level. It has to be citizens working with their local city town councils to get them educated, working with law enforcement to identify and weed these guys out of the community. U.S. military warfighting doctrine, specifically the intelligence pre preparation of the battlefield manual, states that war planners must begin all analysis of the enemy with who the enemy says they are and why they are fighting us. That becomes the basis for determining the enemy threat doctrine, which in the case of jihadis is Sharia. Universally, the enemy, jihadis, whether it's Al Qaeda, ISIS, the Muslim Brotherhood, they all state that they are Muslims waging jihad in the cause of Allah to establish an Islamic state under Sharia. Hey, thank you for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel right down here if you're not already subscribed. If you want to see more of our UTT videos, just click here or here and sign up for our newsletter and join us. Let's put freedom back on the offensive where it belongs.